Hello everyone, this is Marius from the Geo Design course and I have a quick update for you based on some questions that popped in the forums, in the discussion forums. So essentially, just to visualize the problem uh, that some of you have been encountering, I'll just create two polar lines representing some sort of features, whether it's a, you know, a platform or a corridor or a path or you name it, a hill. Uh, let's just convert them to feature lines and let's say that uh, this particular one we would like to put it using our elevation editor let's just put it at 5 meters elevation so both we will just put them at 5 and then whereas the other one we also want to create a feature line of an object and put it at um, 3 meter elevation just to prove the point. So, you know, on the first side, nothing really happened other than we sort of see that there was a crossing in between. And then when we take both of them to the elevation editor, you would expect it to be just flat. But at the moment of release, you could see that they actually, one is pulling the other downwards. So this was supposed to be at five meters straight, but it's being pulled down at the intersection point. And why is it that they, that it happens? You can also observe this uh, behavior when you go to the elevation editor and you can see that there's a point over here that you cannot really, you know, even if I double triple click, I can really change it. It's visualized over here with a white triangle, a triangle rather than a green triangle over here. And, it, and I don't have any control over it. And if I were to select another feature line and bring it inside, you can also see that um, in, into the elevation and there you can also see that uh, it has exactly the same midpoint over here. If I were to move this one around, uh, the distribution would change, uh, but then I still cannot, cannot control that point at all. And why is that? Um, the reason is because these feature lines they cross and they are saved to uh, something that Civil 3D refers to as site. Uh, so a site is an, uh, you can also see it under the tool space, you know, under your alignments, feature lines and sites. When you twirl this open, there's site one, we only have one in this drawing. And then there's a few feature lines on this side. And by default, they would, um, they would be at this side over here. Um, side one, and you can see these are my two feature lines in this particular drawing that I have. And what is a site, you might ask? It's essentially just an invisible container where geometry can be uh, sorted and stored. And then as long as the geometry, uh, in our case, feature lines, resides on the same site, it tries to interact with each other. So what I could do is I could just rename it to you know uh, make it easier for me to understand. So let's say this is my path site, and then uh, I will create another one. Right click new, and then let's just call this uh, parking lot. Again, site um, is just an abstract concept. I can I can name these groups as um, as I please. And then right now, if I want to stop these from interacting with each other, I can just select one of them and I can see that, well, at the moment, both are assigned to, to the path um, site. And then what I can do is uh, I can just right click anywhere with having my feature line selected and then move it to a site. And then from the drop down menu over here, I can select the other one, parking lot. So right now, um, if I go to the elevation editor, you could see that you know there is no crossing anymore. The same thing if I were to select uh, this particular feature line over here, select it, and you can see again this is at three meters elevation, and this would be back to its five meters elevation. And there's no intermediate point. Just to verify that, we can go back to object viewer, and we can see that right now they are um, at their respective elevations. And so looking at our assignment over here, going back to it, uh, going back to my drawing, 
if you were, for example, to have your path that's crossing through your river, I, I've seen that some of you have done that, or maybe there's two paths and one is crossing the, uh, the other, then as long as you separate the underlying feature lines that, uh, that define your geometry onto separate sides, so you see in my case I have a few uh, created over here, so I had one for my river, the other one for my path, and I also had site one the default, um, then, uh, then I'm safe, I know that they are not going to be intera interacting with each other. Sometimes it is desired behavior, for example over here, I would make sure that all my feature lines that you know represent this particular junction over here will have one, two, and three paths shooting out from this platform. I would actually want them to be on the same side so that I, I would make sure that this particular tie-in point, even though I haven't specified it on my platform, I only define it by my by my path, that they have the exact same elevation that they that they essentially match. But then sometimes I would uh, I would maybe try to avoid having this, and then this would be a good example when I want to create this hill that is, you know, a hill on its own, and then I have a, a path that's climbing onwards, and then maybe I want to define the grading of this path separately to this particular um, hill representation that I have over here. And in this, this case, I would probably start with the hill and put all the feature lines that define the hill on a separate site. And then I would take my path or the feature lines that define my path, put these on a separate site, create these separately and create separate surfaces for both of these. And I would grade my, use the grading command over here. And I would embed the newly created path into the hill surface. So again, like there's no one way of doing things, but then just trying to understand the concept of a site helps you mitigate the issues. So if I were to move this this one back, so again, right click um, and then move to site, and then I can move it back to the parking lot, then I'm reintroducing this uh, connection between them that I might not necessarily be interested in. And what's important to understand is, depending on which one you move last, it will uh, it will take precedence over the other. So you see right now we are having this kind of shape uh, where the bottom um, or the, the feature line that was at the bottom at the lower elevation, it's being pulled upward. It's because I moved the, the higher laying feature line as the last one. If I were to move this one in a second, so just move this to the side, it's just the last edit that I'm making and then go back, then you can see that it actually right now is pulling the other one down. So the hierarchy over here is just negotiated constantly. And the last one that I touch wins over the other. I hope it makes sense now and then answers a few of your questions and also just empowers you to create a little bit more complex designs now that you can utilize the concept of sites in your, in your own project. Good luck.